Welcome to your pre-lab. This is uh, your ions in solution uh, lab that we'll be talking about today. We are going to be using our solubility rules quite extensively today. We are going to be writing both molecular and net ionic equations. You'll notice these solutions that we have out here. Um, well, I guess we could list them. Magnesium bromide, cobalt-2 chloride, barium nitrate, calcium chloride, sodium chromate, lead-2 nitrate, sodium hydroxide, ammonium carbonate, sodium sulfide, sodium phosphate, and copper-2 sulfate. Now, these are the same solutions that we have on our data table going across and also down the side. Now, the copy of your data table is placed inside a sheet protector. You'll see why in just a moment, and yours is purple. Uh, you'll also receive, for your use, a green data table. It's really not green for any color other than I thought it would be different and fun to use green paper today. This is where you will record your results. This is where you will, form, will, will perform the experiment. You'll notice there are 55 different combinations that are numbered here on your data table, 1 through 55. And this area down below is here for us to be able to repeat um, a particular reaction if we need to. Now, <clears throat> the way this is designed is for us in this square to react cobalt-2 nitrate with magnesium bromide. So we will use these dropper bottles of magnesium bromide and cobalt-2 chloride to place a drop of each solution in, this, in the appropriate square. Make sure the second drop is placed on top of the first drop, not next to it. They can't be friendly if they're not directly placed on top of each other. If they're placed to the side of each other, they won't be able to react. So keep that in mind. And then in the next square, we will place a drop of magnesium bromide again, but this time we will add barium nitrate to that. Then in the third square, we'll have magnesium bromide again, and we will add calcium chloride to that. And you see what would happen as we go across. Now you'll notice the bottom half is empty for right now because these are repeats mostly. For instance, uh, this is cobalt, nitrate, and magnesium bromide, which we'll do right here. So there's no need to do it again. This is barium nitrate and magnesium bromide, which we would do right here in square number two. Now, these blanks are available to you to do the experiment over again if you're not satisfied with your results up above. Now there is one correction we need to make. You'll notice this is cobalt-2 chloride that we'll be using. However, your data table says cobalt-2 nitrate. So you will actually need to make that change on your data table. So let's put this in my on my ring stand here, which will act as a tripod for right now. Hopefully the glare's not too bad. I'll be checking on this throughout the presentation to see if it's working for us. So right now I'm going to go ahead and take this and make a correction on my data table. So as we said, this is not cobalt-2 nitrate. This will be cobalt-2 chloride both here and also again over here. We didn't have the nitrate in our stock room, so we had to use the chloride today. Alrighty, the lab's pretty straightforward. In our first square, let me zoom in on that for you. Alright, that's about as far as we can go with this camera. In our first square, we will put a drop of the cobalt-2 chloride and the magnesium bromide. So, let's get this out and ready to go. Put a drop of magnesium bromide here. And then, directly on top of that first drop, we will place some cobalt-2 nitrate. Actually, sorry, cobalt-2 chloride. Then in the second square, we'll have magnesium bromide again. In fact, it might be nice just to put magnesium bromide all the way across here. If you do this carefully, it'll look really pretty when you're finished. So all of these will have magnesium bromide in it, or on it. So you can see I have drops of magnesium bromide going across, and they've beaded up quite nicely. In this one, we are going to add our uh, barium nitrate to that first drop of magnesium bromide. So hopefully we can get it to come out of the bottle. Come on. Oh. Let's work on that for just a second. Okay. Oh, there we go. There's two drops. And this square will place a drop of calcium chloride. 
and the next one will have a drop of sodium chromate. Okay, and the next square we will add lead nitrate to our magnesium bromide, and we'll stop there for just a moment. Now, your job will be to examine these and record on your data table whether or not a reaction has occurred. So, if you look carefully at this first square here, labeled number one, uh, there are magnifiers in the classroom, you will look to see if a reaction has occurred. Now, we will know a reaction occurs if a precipitate is formed. So, we saw in a demonstration in class yesterday, and we've also seen a picture of a precipitate forming. <laughs> in this particular case, no reaction has occurred, no precipitate is formed. So on my data table, on box 1, I am just going to simply write the letters NR so that I know when I go home that no reaction occurred there. Taking a look at box number 2, once again you can get a magnifier out to look carefully, but it doesn't appear as though a precipitate has formed in box number 2, so in box number 2 I will put the letters NR. Now some of these you'll need to look closely at. We'll skip box 3 for right now, but box 4, we might have a precipitate forming, but you are going to really be careful. Only want to be careful with your partner. Maybe both take a look at it and then come to a decision as to whether or not a precipitate is formed. Now in box 5, you can see, this is why we do this on purple paper instead of white paper, there is a white precipitate that is formed. They're not always white, but in this case it certainly is. So, in my data table on box number 5, I am going to write the letters PPT, which will stand for precipitate. So we will know that when we um, finish the lab report that a precipitate formed in box number five. Now we'll continue that process until the entire, this entire half of the data table has been uh, filled in, or excuse me, uh, this entire sheet has been filled up with drops. If you make a mistake or one drop spills into another area, you can get a Kleenex out after that's been finished and that will absorb that droplet so it won't interfere with your next reaction. Okay. Then when you're all finished with this you can take a picture of it if you'd like with your cell phone so you can show all your friends the fun you had during chemistry class today and then when you're completed with that you'll simply turn the faucet on uh, don't let it go too fast and you'll hold this under the water like so, and we'll just rinse off our work for the day. Then we'll set it here, and we'll simply allow it to dry for the next class period. Okay? Now, to finish up your lab report, you have collected your data on your green paper, and so what we will do is either on the back side of this green paper or on a separate sheet of paper, we will write the net ionic reaction for what has happened. So, for number one, we'll turn this over and write number one on the back. We had MgBr2 reacting with, let's take a look, COCl2. Now, we did not see a reaction occur here. Let me zoom in on that a little bit for you. So, all we need to write after uh, this molecular uh, the molecular formula on this side are the letters NR if nothing happens. Box number two, let's take a look at what we saw. Well, that's another NR. That was magnesium bromide and barium nitrate. So we would have MgBr2 and our barium nitrate. And we did not see a reaction there, so we will put the letters NR. Now, if you recall, we'll skip over to box 5 right now, we had a precipitate form there. Now, it's between magnesium bromide and lead 2 nitrate. So, you'll do 3, 4, we're skipping down to 5. So, we had MgBr2 and lead 2 nitrate. And something did happen here. We have to decide what our precipitate um, is. So we have a choice. Is it magnesium nitrate or is it lead to bromide? Well, if you use your solubility rules, you will find that all nitrates are soluble, so it's not magnesium nitrate. However, all bromides are soluble except for 
silver, mercury, and lead. So you would know that these two got together. So your net ionic is Pb2+, plus because it was lead 2 nitrate that you used, and you ended up using two bromides, and you form PbBr2, and that's my solid. On this side, these ions were dissolved in water, so we will place the letters AQ in parentheses afterwards. So that would be the net ionic equation for number 5. And then you'd continue on. Whenever there is a no reaction, you'll write the molecular equation on the left side and the letters NR on the right hand side. But whenever there is a reaction, you have to figure out what the solid was and write the net ionic equation for the formation of that solid. Now sometimes you will find, when you do this, that your solubility rules are not perfect. Nothing ever is. So you might have a precipitate that forms when you shouldn't have. So take your best guess as to what that precipitate would be. Other times you won't have a precipitate when you would expect to see a precipitate. Don't make things up. If you didn't see it, simply write the molecular equation on one side and the letters NR on the other. Alrighty, well this will be a fun lab. It's going to take a little while to complete our data table here. And then it will probably take you quite a while to complete the back side because we are going to have a total, if you look at this, of 55 different combinations. So that would, should keep you quite busy throughout the period and then of course at home to finish it up. Alrighty, enjoy!